we have learned what are halves and we know what are thirds now let us learn what are fourths by the name we can say when a whole is divided into four equal parts we call the equal parts as fourths children by now we very well know how a figure can be divided into four equal parts so now let us learn if the parts of the four equal part is shaded then how we can read and write the fraction for it what fraction of each square is blue you can see the example figure square is divided into four equal parts now let us see how to read and write the fraction for the shaded parts in the first figure out of the four equal parts one part is shaded so we can write the fraction for the shaded part as 1 by 4 and we can read it as 1/4 and children to 1/4 we can also say it as 1 quarter okay now for the second figure the same figure is divided in four equal parts and this time two parts are shaded then for the shaded part we write the fraction as 2 by 4 where the number 2 represents the total shaded parts and the number written down 4 represents the total number of parts now this 2 by 4 we can read it as 2 fourths or we can also say 2 quarters now in the third figure three parts are shaded so we can write the fraction for the shaded part as 3 by 4 and we can read it as 3 fourths or we can also say 3 quarters for the last one when all the parts out of the four equal parts are shaded then the fraction can be written as 4 by 4 and we can say 4 fourths we can read it as 4 fourths or children we can also say one whole is shaded and remember to the four fourths we can also say as four quarters so children the word quarter is only used when a figure is divided into four equal parts and a part of this is used then only we can use the word quarter if a figure is divided into two or three equal parts in such cases we don't use the word a quarter let us see an example on how the concept of fourths is used in our real life children you can see the picture of a pizza shown now what we have to do in this show how the pizza should have been cut so that everyone have equal share in the family of four members Now children we have to divide this pizza into four equal parts so that all four members of the family get the pizza share equally so how will be dividing it we can divide the pizza like this we can have the vertical division along with the horizontal division then we can take a part of that whole pizza and give to one family member so that means we can say each family member gets 1/4 of the pizza and children to 1/4 how do we write it in fraction we write to 1/4 as 1 by 4 so each member of the family out of the four members will be getting 1/4 of the pizza so this is how we are using the concepts of fourths in our real life by now we understood what are halves thirds and fourths of a whole now let us remember some points two halves make a whole if we have two halves like this then it will make a whole second point three thirds make a whole if we have three thirds then combine together it will make a whole and the next one four fourths make a whole if we have four fourths and if they are combined together then it makes a whole
children by now you understood what is one half you know what is one third how much is two third what fraction of a whole is one fourth how to read and write two fourths three fourths and so on so for the knowledge children let us also see how we can read and write if a whole is divided into five equal parts that is for the knowledge let us understand what are fifths what fraction of each circle is green now you can see the whole is divided into five equal parts so if one part out of the five equal parts is shaded then we can write the fraction as 1 by 5 and we can read it as 1 fifth if two parts are shaded children out of the five parts we can write the fraction as 2 by 5 and we can read it as 2 fifths next one if three parts shaded then we can write the fraction for the shaded part as 3 by 5 and we can read it as 3 fifths next one if four parts are shaded out of five parts then we can write the fraction for the shaded part as 4 by 5 and we can read it as 4 fifths now the last one children if all the parts of the whole are shaded then we can write the fraction for the shaded part as 5 by 5 where 5 represents the number of shaded parts and the number written down that 5 represents the total number of parts so here either we can read the fraction as 5 fifths or we can also read it as one whole so this was for our knowledge how to read and write the fraction if a whole is divided into fifths similarly children if a whole is divided into sixths or into sevenths then same way we can also read and write the fractions for it writing fractions we can write the fractions for the shaded part as number of shaded parts by total number of equal parts now let us see children how we can write the fractions for the shaded part as shown in the given figures for the first one a complete whole circle is shaded so it's a whole for the second figure the circle is divided into two equal parts out of it one part is shaded so we write the fraction for the shaded part as 1 by 2 for the third figure the circle is divided into three equal parts out of which two parts are shaded so we write the fraction for the two shaded parts as 2 by 3 for the next figure where the circle is divided into four equal parts and all the four parts are shaded then the fraction will be written as 4 by 4 when all the parts of the whole are shaded then we also say it as a whole one whole is shaded for the next figure where the circle is divided into five equal parts and three parts are shaded then we write the fraction for the three shaded parts as three by five for the last one children where the circle is divided into six equal parts the fraction for the three shaded parts out of the six parts will be written as three by six so this is how we can easily write the fractions for the shaded parts. Now let us match these circles divided into number of equal parts to its names called as. In the first one, the first circle is divided into three equal parts. Then we call the equal parts as thirds. So we have to match to thirds. In the second figure, the circle is divided into four equal parts. So, we call the equal parts as fourths. Let us match to fourths. The third figure, where the circle is divided into six equal parts. So, we call the equal parts as sixths. Let us match it to sixths. 
in the next one we can see the circle is divided into two equal parts then we call the equal parts as halves the last one children the circle is divided into eight equal parts we call the equal parts as eighths we are now very much familiar on how to write the fractions for the shaded part let us also see children how we can write the fractions for the unshaded parts of the figures write the fraction for the unshaded parts here comes the figures and now let us see how we can write the fractions for the unshaded parts of the figures in the first figure it's a rectangle a vertical rectangle equally divided into six parts out of six parts the four parts are shaded in blue and two parts are not shaded so the fraction for the two unshaded part can be written as 2 by 6 where 2 represents the unshaded parts and 6 represents the total number of equal parts the figure is divided into for the next figure where it's a square divided into four equal parts the fraction for the unshaded parts of this figure can be written as 3 by 4 where the number 3 represents the number of unshaded parts and 4 represents the number of total parts the figure is divided into. The next figure children it's a rectangle again divided into 3 equal parts. Now one part of the 3 parts is unshaded so the fraction can be written as 1 by 3 in the last one it's a square divided into nine equal parts out of which three parts are unshaded so the fraction can be written as 3 by 9 which represents the unshaded parts and 9 represents the total number of equal parts so children we have also learned now how we can write the fractions for the unshaded parts of the figures by this, we have finished with the part 1 of this lesson. I hope you have understood it well and have enjoyed the lesson children. Now do the exercise 7a in your textbook. Thank you to all my dear students.